One of the items that has been on many a Game Maker user's wish list for new features when it comes to 3D has been the ability to edit the contents of a vertex buffer on the fly. And we've kind of had the ability to do that for a long time. In fact, this video is perhaps a bit of a callback to one of the first 3D and Game Maker videos that I did uh, when I first started doing this again in early 2020. So there do exist two functions, vertex create buffer from buffer and buffer create from vertex buffer. And those two functions easily win the award for the most difficult function names to say out loud in all of Game Maker but they would allow you to create a new, either a regular buffer from the contents of a vertex buffer or create a new vertex buffer from the contents of a regular buffer. I will let you try and guess which is which. And if you wanted to modify the contents of a vertex buffer, either perhaps modifying the vertex positions or uh, UVs or something like that, or the vertex color, uh, let's say if you hit the space bar, you want the shape or the, uh, the color of the pirate ship to change like that, you would have to save the contents of a vertex buffer to a regular buffer, iterate over the regular buffer, do whatever modifications you want, uh, delete your original vertex buffer and recreate the vertex buffer from scratch from the contents of the regular buffer, which maybe isn't the most elegant solution, but it, uh, it does get the job done. If I keep hitting the space bar, we're gonna randomize the color of this here going merry. And the code to do that would look something like this. So we have a buffer create from vertex buffer, and that will convert our vertex buffer stored in this variable to a regular buffer. And then when I go into the step event and hit the space bar, uh, we will iterate over the contents of that regular buffer and we will uh, make our modification, in this case, uh, poking in the new color value into the position where the color resides in the vertex format. And then we're gonna delete the original uh, vertex buffer and recreate it from the, uh, the data that we modified. And uh, in this example here, I'm also taking the uh, the amount of time I'm um, figuring out how long it takes to do this. So about, I'm going to say like upper one point something, low two uh, milliseconds, which in this case isn't terrible. Uh, there's not much going on in the scene. So a two millisecond hit um, to the frame time once in a while isn't really like a noticeable hitch or anything like that. Uh, if you were using a larger um, pirate ship model with more... Uh, more triangle data, obviously, it would be. Anyway, uh, this might strike you as a little bit inelegant or a little bit inefficient because we are deleting our, um, our original vertex buffer and recreating it from scratch. And it might be nice if there's a way to uh, not have to do that. And starting in Game Maker 2023.11, uh, we have two new functions, which are going to be vertex uh, update buffer from vertex and vertex update buffer from buffer. And these will basically do that. So uh, vertex upper update buffer from, boy, these are just as hard to say as the, uh, the original two function names, but vertex update buffer from vertex is going to essentially copy the contents of one vertex buffer to another. The utility of that I'm not convinced is very great, um, but vertex, vertex update buffer from buffer will take the contents of a regular buffer and just copy it into an existing vertex buffer without having to delete it and recreate it. So if I were to comment out this and vertex update buffer from buffer, uh, the destination buffer is going to be vb underscore Mary. The destination offset is going to be zero because we want to start writing our data from the beginning. The source buffer is going to be uh, that regular buffer that I've been modifying, and there's two optional arguments for the source offset and the source size, just in case you only want to copy part of the original, um, the original buffer into the vertex buffer, and I won't delete that. I'll just uh, leave that commented out. If I run the game now, let's see, if I hit the space bar, it still works as before. Um, unfortunately, and this might be a bit of a letdown to some people, um, the amount of time that it takes to do that doesn't really appear to be that different. I would not, looking at these numbers, be able to tell you which run was which with the uh, deleting the buffer and recreating it versus just um, updating the vertex buffer. And I'm not entirely sure why that is. It stands to reason that deleting a buffer and re reallocating it from scratch would take longer than just copying the contents from one location to an existing location. I'm not sure if when you delete some amount of, uh, like when you free a certain amount of memory and you ask Game Maker to immediately reserve that same amount of memory, if it's just going to give you a reference to the exact same strip of memory and they won't have to like request more from the operating system or whatever. It really seems like, and I've tested this both in the virtual machine and in the uh, compiler, 
It seems like this takes about the same amount of time as, um, as doing it the old way, and I hope that's not too much of a disappointment to people. That said, not all is lost, because if you only need to update part of a vertex buffer, so if you only need to update, let's say, um, I don't know, the first, say, 20 triangles in a vertex buffer. So, um, the vertex format size is going to be 36 bytes. If I wanted 20 triangles, that would be 36 times 20 is 720 uh, bytes. So if I only wanted to modify the first 36 bytes of this buffer, instead of recreating the whole thing from scratch, uh, I could get away with saying, um, let's say the source offset is going to be zero and the source size is going to be that 720. Uh, let's see how long this takes. Uh, I'll do that a few times. Okay, so just uh, updating 20 uh, vertices. I didn't actually... Uh, where are the first 20 triangles on this pirate ship? Or the first 20 vertices on this pirate ship, anyway. They're, uh, they're on the front here, okay. And uh, since it's 20 is not divisible by 3, uh, only part of the, um, the last triangle actually gets colorized. Anyway, this takes about 10 to 20 uh, microseconds. And if I were to... Um, do that while recreating the entire vertex buffer. I imagine that would take quite a bit longer. So uh, we're gonna randomize that color. And indeed, it takes uh, quite a bit longer to recreate the entire vertex buffer than it is to just uh, update part of it. So again, I suspect this is going to be a little bit of a letdown to some people because it's not like directly like a performance um, boost if you uh, if you have to update the entire vertex buffer, but if you only have to update part of it, so let's say you're making like terrain deformation and if you want to update um, just a couple of vertices of your terrain at a time, this would be quite a lot faster for something like that than um, having to like delete the whole terrain buffer and recreate it from scratch. Even if you had your terrain chunked, um, it would probably be quite a lot faster. I kind of want to throw together a terrain deformation um, example now, but anyway, that's the vertex buffer update function. Uh, there is no analog to buffer create from vertex buffer. There is no like buffer um, update from vertex buffer. And while it seems a little bit weird that that would be an emission, I, I kind of see why that is. Vertex buffers can't change their contents on the fly. And if you already have an existing buffer uh, that you, uh, you allocated for vertex data like this, you could like just use that in the first place. Hey. I really tried to think of some edge cases where you might want to update a uh, regular buffer from a vertex buffer. Like, I can imagine that, but uh, the situations where you'd want to do that would be just, like, so, so rare. Anyway, so if I were to look at vertex formats for a minute, uh, there's been a, uh, a companion function to vertex formats that's also been added, and that's going to be vertex format get info. And this is another one that some of us have been asking for for GameMaker for, like, years and years and years, but... Um, vertex format get info will return some information about uh, the contents of a vertex format. And there's not a whole lot to this. I don't really think this merits its own video, but if I were to show message, uh, let me pretty print this with a JSON stringify. Uh, this will produce a struct containing some information about a vertex format. So we have the number of elements. We have the stride, which is a fancy word for the, the size of a vertex. So that's going to be 36 bytes for position, normal, text, chord, and color. And possibly most importantly, we have the, uh, an array containing information about those uh, vertex attributes. So um, these are all just numbers, but I want to say that uh, usage refers to vertex usage, which is like the, the direct X like vertex context for um, what a vertex attribute is actually doing. So vertex usage position, um, normals, and so on. Uh, the type is just going to be the uh, the data type, so I believe those map onto vertex type, um, whatever. So vertex type color, vertex type float one, float two for a uh, a vector two, two four byte um, floats. We have float three, float four, and u byte four, which is uh, what you would use for color. So uh, four unsigned bytes. And the other uh, bits of information that are attached to each of the elements in a vertex format are pretty self-explanatory. The size is the amount of bytes that it takes up. So a position is going to take up uh, three, four byte values. So that's going to be 12 bytes in total. And uh, the offset, which is the, uh, 
the position in each vertex that this uh, this data can be found. So, for example, uh, the uh, the color in this 36 byte vertex format, the color is the last four bytes, so the offset will be 32, as you can see, and um, you can work it out for the other attributes as well. This is a function which is probably not going to be very useful for like your own games because you wrote the code, you already know what the format of your vertex format is. There's no real need to have to get the info like this. But if you're the sort of person who's into writing libraries for other people, and if you want to write some kind of vertex buffer processing function to do whatever to a vertex buffer, and you can't guarantee ahead of time what the other person, what the user's vertex format is going to look like, you don't know, like for example, if they might have their, um, if they might have their color and their texture coordinate swapped around. Um, this can be a useful function to allow you to figure that out on the fly, and uh, rearrange the, um, the bits of data that you get out of a vertex buffer on the fly. One last thing, um, you uh, when vertex buffers are frozen, uh, if I were to say vertex freeze. Uh, when vertex buffers are frozen, they become decidedly read-only, and you can't do things like uh, create regular buffers from their contents. When you freeze a vertex buffer, a uh, oversimplified version of what's going on is essentially the, the computer is, um, the graphics API is going to send the vertex data to the GPU and tell it to stay there, and uh, the vertex buffer will no longer live in regular memory, it'll live in uh, video memory, and that's what makes them so fast because you don't have to constantly waste GPU bandwidth sending the same vertex buffer to the GPU to be drawn every single frame. You can just have it stay there. But the trade-off of that is that uh, once, the, uh, once the vertex buffer lives in video memory, there's no getting it back. Uh, you can't really do anything with it other than to draw it or tell the GPU to delete it. And if I were to run this and try to say buffer create from frozen vertex buffer, it would just crash. Game Maker doesn't like that. And the same thing applies to uh, updating a frozen vertex buffer. So um, if I were to uh, freeze the vertex buffer after creating the regular buffer from it, and if I were to try to update the, the vertex buffer uh, after it's been frozen, uh, likewise, the game will just crash and Game Maker won't let us do that with a very similar error message. Okay. So that's it. That is updating vertex buffers. That is the uh, the vertex format get info function. I uh, kind of do want to make like a height map terrain deformation um, demo now uh, with what I just said with the vertex format update functions. But if I do end up doing that, that'll have to wait for another day. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one tutorial tutorial like this, and one Let's Make a Game, currently a 3D Zelda-like wizard game, so if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found in all the usual places. Otherwise, I hope you all found this useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Zenjamin, Vitro V, Square Crow, Syndra Larson, Manta Ray, Game Maker, Edward Holt, and DJ Gibbles for supporting these videos. If you want to contribute to the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.